Welcome back to The Rundown. Well, since we've been on the air, we've spoken with the Prime Minister, the leader of the Progressive Party. We've spoken to his deputy, uh, the Honorable Chester Cooper. We've spoken to the leader of the opposition free national movement, Michael Pintard, Pintard to garner feedback on politics, what's happening in the country. Tonight, joining us tonight is the leader of the Coalition of Independents, uh, Lincoln Bain, uh, to really give his take on what his party is doing and their preparation for the next general election, and also uh, speak to uh, some of the national issues issues that we are facing in our country. Uh, Mr. Bain, good evening. Welcome. Good evening, Clint. Thank good you for having me here. It's, it is our pleasure. Uh, I don't need to substantiate why you are here, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important for people to understand uh, that if we are in a free and democratic society, we have to understand how it works in the media. Yeah. Um, your party uh, or your organization, however you want to word it, at the last general elections proved to be a force to reckon with. Mm -hmm. um, a matter of fact, out, out, outpacing who we consider to be the third party, which was the Democratic National Alliance. Mm -hmm. That movement is no longer around, uh, to my knowledge, and that puts your organization, well, even if they were around, you, it puts you in the third spot position because you got it the third largest amount of votes. Yes. Uh, and that means that you always have a place here at the Broadcasting Corporation because uh, Bahamian people obviously uh, subscribe to you and listen to you, and our job is to be able to give you the space as well. And so that's based on the premises as to why we're here. So don't come for me. Uh, this is what we do here. Thank you. Uh, this is a people station and we allow the people to have their voice. Uh, I want to start, first of all, if you wish, right where we are at with this story tonight. Yeah. Um, because this is a tragedy. You're, you're a father. Uh, and we understand as parents how much we care for our children and our job as fathers to protect them. Yeah. Um, when you see this happening in our country, uh, what do you say to it? <sighs> Clint, first, I would say that November 28th is a significant day for me. It was the day in 1995 that I joined the police force, and it was also the day in 2005 that I left the police force. And so this is a significant day for me, and to be here on such a day when such a tragedy happens, it touches my heart. Yeah. I, I have to say, Clint, I cannot mince words. Um, uh, we are failing. We are failing our nation as it relates to crime. I want to say that the leadership of the police force is failing. I cannot mince words. They are failing. And so I'm going to tell them this so that they can, can do what they have to do to do better. Because they have to do something. The government is failing on this. Our judicial system is failing on this. And we have to get it together. Um, every, every killer wants to live. No killer wants mm. to die. And so one of the major problems that we're having is that uh, the punishment does not fit the crime. We are not executing killers anymore, even though it is on our books. And so when we, as the government, break the law by not enforcing the law, we are failing. They're using the excuse of the Privy Council uh, to say that the Privy Council put some specifications on it. All they said was uh, the worst of the worst must be executed. And so what we must do is, is determine what is the worst of the worst. In fact, they told us what the worst of the worst is. We can put it into our law so that we don't have that question again, and they can go back to executing killers. So you don't believe the hands are tied? You don't believe when these appeals keep going and until it goes to Privy Council and the Privy Council sends it back saying, we don't consider the worst of the worst, it ties the hands of, of, the, of, the, of no, the system? The, the Privy Council, the Max Otito case, the Privy Council specifically uh, said what the worst of the worst is. Mm -hmm. Someone who kills, mm -hmm. but they're also doing it in the execution of another crime. Mm -hmm. So let's say you kidnap a girl and you rape her and then you kill her. That's the worst of the worst, in my opinion. Right. All right? And so all we had to do, though, was codify it in our laws so that you're not depending on the common law of the Privy Council's decision. We can codify in our law tomorrow in the House of Assembly instead of the arguments they're doing back and forth. They can go and say the worst of the worst it's is defined as this. It. And then the Privy Council's hands are tied because they can only deal with the law. Okay? And as long as it's within the Constitution, it is done. And so there are many countries around the world that execute killers, including the United States of America. Mm -hmm. We can do it. Because there is no uh, accountability and there's no real punishment, it's going to keep happening. These fellas are willing to go to jail, do uh, uh, a, a couple of weeks, and then get bail and continue. I, I, I wanted to ask that because 
we're trying to, everybody, Bahamians are trying to figure out how do we get around this issue of crime. Do you believe that crime is, is constant because there is no fear of, of, of consequences? It's, it's a myriad of, of, of issues. One of the major reasons is crime is very related to poverty. All right? Um, and we need to empower our Bahamian people. And when people are suffering, they're going to do what they have to do to survive. And so that's one of, of the major issues that we have. Then when there is uh, a little enforcement, not just on the part of the police, because the police are arresting people, uh, but when they go to court and they can get bail easily, et cetera, and we've not found a solution to this, that's where a part of the problem comes in. There are a lot of solutions that we can bring to the table to avoid this. Criminals want to get away. Not only do killers want to live, but criminals want to get away. So if we put certain things in place, our team has met with the police commissioner and gave him advice on how they can properly police our society. He said they were very good ideas, but we didn't see him put them into play. For example, many of our communities are planned communities, not organic communities like Bay and Town. Planned communities like South Beach, like Elizabeth Estate. They have one way in and one way out. If you police them properly, one police officer in a car, and you have a police at the back entrance and the front entrance and a police roaming on the inside, because now you have more police officers available with one in a car, now the criminal is difficult for them to get away when you add CCTV along with it. Once something happens, a gunshot is fired, you know where it is because of the shot spotter, you can police better. We need to have a forensic lab so that we can have proper investigations because personally, I don't want to execute persons based on gossip. I want us to have a proper um, forensic lab where we can have proper investigations, not who would want to see him dead? Who did he have an argument with recently? What was he wearing? We need proper solutions to this crime and we can solve this crime issue. They're saying that the courts are backlogged. The Prime Minister said it'll be 10 years. Then all we have to do, we have over 2,000 lawyers, don't we, Clint? Yeah. All we have to do is take these trained lawyers and, and create more courts. This is a national security issue. We are a tourist nation. Spend the money, create more courts, or bring persons in from other parts of the Caribbean, bring them to uh, the Bahamas, and open up more courts. Court that focuses on the backlog. Give one uh, judge, one magistrate, you're going to deal with uh, the year 2000. You're going to deal with 2001. You're going to deal... And clear the backlog. There are simple solutions, but we are just failing at this time. We look at, at, at what's happening in our country, and, 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 I, and I think I want to go to this particular point because it is something that is used often uh, uh, by, by you and your, and your team, that is social media. Mm -hmm. And there is a concern that the rhetoric on social media is becoming so toxic uh, that it, we, we on one hand are trying to find solutions to crime and peace, mm -hmm. but on the one hand we are creating disturbances with our rhetoric. I, yes. And I'll, I'll give you a good example, and, 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 since he, and since he wants me to obviously call his name, I will, right? There's a gentleman on, on the feed tonight by the name of Craig Curry, right? And, and I, I often allow people to express their views and say what they want to say. But Craig Curry is on the feed tonight, and, and I don't normally give people attention who, who, who are attention seekers, but I, I want to make my point, and this is a perfect point, who, who says that, Clint, we, Clint if, you, if you, you were sell something to that effect, and if you do what you do to the Bahamian people again, they will come for you, I will come for you. Now, to me, that's an open threat online that you tell them you're coming for me, Craig. Now, the police are listening, so that I'll, I'll leave it to them to go and, and do what they need to do. But this is the kind of rhetoric mm -hmm. that I'm talking about mm -hmm. that we can all agree, we can all disagree, mm -hmm. we can all have our views, we can all have our positions. But when we become toxic mm -hmm. and go to social media and verbally issue threats or verbally lambaste people, mm -hmm. how do we then turn around and talk about peace? Mm -hmm. How do we turn around and talk about our systems aren't working? You're contributing to the breakdown of the system. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I believe Bahamians have, have abused social media because we believe it's a, good, it's a coward move that we can hide behind our profile, make open ended threats to people and not have consequences about it. I believe we have to be mature about what it is that we do. And I want you to speak to that because you have a very strong and, and aggressive social media platform. And I believe that we who are in the, in, in, in the public light have to be the first ones to decry foolishness. Mm -hmm. 
I, I fully agree. I think what you're hearing, though, is the voice of a people who are being abused, not just people who are abusing social media. Mm -hmm. When the people get angry, they start to lash out. Whether it's your children, your wife, uh, your spouse, people start to lash out when they get angry. But there angry. has to be responsibility. Yes, there must be. Because I, if I get angry, I don't go and kill somebody. Yeah, I'll say that. I'll, 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 <laughs> just let me complete the full thing. And so, no, you don't go and kill somebody, um, mm -hmm. except in the Bahamas where you won't get the proper um, uh, uh, punishment for it. Um, but people are angry. And I hear some people say, uh, Lincoln, a lot of your supporters are, are very angry on social media. Mm -hmm. And what I have to say to them is that those are Bahamians. They, those are not necessarily mm -hmm. my supporters. I don't know them. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not members of my organization. They're like, you got to talk to your people. I'm like, talk to them. These yeah. are adults with freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Clint, we are public figures. Mm -hmm. You are a legend in broadcasting now. You've, you've shown yourself on a different light. You've gone to, to, to two major stations now and just revolutionized them. So you are, you're a legend in your own right, but you're a public figure. I wake up every day to people on social media telling lies on me. That's they wrong. make up stories. He did this yeah. at a church. He did that. He yeah. did. That. They yeah. make up full lies. Yeah. And people will ask them, okay, prove it. Or what did he do? Right. And then they, they go quiet. But I have to take that. I believe in freedom of speech so much that I don't sue them. Right. All right? Because I believe that people should have their voice. I get cussed out <laughs> from PLPs, from f &Ms, but you have to be mature. And so you, you are lying, so you can take that. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that, you know, that, that, I know that, that they don't move you. I know you know that. They don't. They don't. Um, they I'm don't. saying this for the public. Yeah. But uh, persons like that, those are persons, regular Bahamians who are angry. Now, what the government can do to deal with a lot of this is they can give us our Freedom of Information Act. Right. Whenever you have secrecy, people are going to make assumptions. They're going to say things, and sometimes they're not going to say it properly. They're not going to word it properly where they should say allegedly, reportedly. Right. We're professionals. We're going to right, say that. Right, Some right. behaviors are just going to say, boy, I hear this, or, right. or, or this app, this went down. And so the government is at fault. Mm -hmm. And so because a lot of people have lost trust for the media, Clint, a lot of people have. They've lost trust for the media. Um, I've been a victim of, of some media stories that yeah. were, were not true, all right? Um, but I don't go and complain. I don't, I don't row about it. Right. I just move on. Um, but there are some people watching that, and they're like, wow, they're painting the COI as rowdy when they went to the, to the parliament to, to just present some bills. The police attack Lincoln and... And then the people got rowdy because he attacked Lincoln, and, but the news only showed the people getting rowdy. They didn't show the full story, right. but you will have 50,000 people watch the full thing on social media. And see some completely different. And they saw something completely different than what the media covered, so now people are not trusting the media, yeah. and that's going to happen, Clint. And so you have to... No, I, I fully yeah. stand by that. One of the things I discussed just recently to someone was, I believe, I will say this publicly, that the media in this country mm -hmm. has fallen down on its job. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is um, we no longer tell the story. Yeah. We give a view of the story, mm -hmm. and that's not journalism. Yes. Journalism is not, okay, this is my view of what happened. Journalism is, let me hear the facts, let me hear the information, let me do my research, and if it's factual, I report mm -hmm. it. If it's not, I, I rebut it. Mm -hmm. That's what media is, but we don't do that today. We, we, oh, we, there are agendas, and yes. sadly, because there are agendas, the, the, the reports are not, are, not, are not factual. And that is one of the reasons why I, I was adamant about coming back to the broadcasting corporation to allow that and us to have his free wings to do what it was it intended. And I will to say do. to persons out there that whenever we are, are going somewhere and that you know about it, you send a team of out there to cover that it. That is what we do. Yeah. Uh, and that is how you get results. We're not here to make decisions for people. Mm -hmm. We're here to give people the information and allow them to make their own decisions mm -hmm. and their own choices. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what media should do. But I want to, I don't want to spend time talking about yes. us. I want to get, I want people to get to know yes. Lincoln Bain. Uh, tell us about you and mm -hmm. why it is that you accepted this call. Because, and I say that because you didn't always start out doing this. You and I know each other for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, for whether it's from the music world, mm -hmm. people don't recognize he was one of the ones from Vision who sang the, the new, brown new world <laughs> that Miles Monroe uh, had, had, had recorded. And people don't recognize that's you singing bass <laughs> in a brand new world. And then people will not recognize that one of the first, I call it reality shows we ever had, was, was, was Controversy TV. Mm -hmm. And that was you and a gentleman who works here. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Y'all give me a guy. 
Taylor. About Utah Taylor. It was y'all who were going everywhere, going on the beaches, and <laughs> people people park up and, and doing it. That was you. Mm. So I've seen, I've been with you through your various changes in life and stages of life. Mm -hmm. um, but never once did I see a uh, um, political, political leader. Mm -hmm. What caused you to move into this vein? And I think if I'm very careful, I, I, I remember when we got this, this fire to start a revolution back in the other place where I was. But I'll allow you to talk. Yeah, and so uh, I think it's natural progression. Even when I did my TV shows and my radio shows, uh, I always fought for the people. They would not just see me on TV or on radio, they would always see me on the news because I was out there fighting for different causes. Mm -hmm. Every cause we won because we fought uh, vigorously. Mm -hmm. And the powerful people in the country weren't used to someone fighting them like Wolverine. They used to us being afraid we're gonna lose our job, can't pay your mortgage, yeah. that kind of stuff. They weren't used to what we were doing. And so it was natural progression. And so um, it got to a point where um, I decided that, you know, I, I wanted to be uh, something more. Um, I was a businessman, and that was, was what I did for a very long time. I was very good at it, and I loved it. Um, but it was activism, fighting for people, the downtrodden, that always moved me. From I was in, change. From I was in kindergarten, I was, a, I was a bully killer. And so whenever, if you watch the, the battles I fight, it's against the powerful people. It's not against regular people. I'm not going to fight, you know, regular babies fighting each other. You all go to court. Right. But when it's someone who feels they don't have a voice and they're fighting powerful persons, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to beat that big guy. And so that's, that has always been me. Uh, it came to a point where even me got tired, weary of it, and I was leaving the country. I was going to go away. I had a business deal. I was gone. Uh, but some ladies came to me, and they wanted to to, to go into activism. And I was like, man, listen, Bahamians, okay, <laughs> I'm gone. I'm going to do a website for you, and um, I, I'll teach you how to do research, and, and then I'm gone. And as I started to do the research, I started to research on our natural resources first, because that's what they were interested in. And uh, I started coming across things, and it was blowing my mind, Clint. It was stuff that I'd never heard anyone say before, uh, things that, that really uh, uh, amazed me that we were actually wealthy. We were, we were rich. And so we said, I said, no, 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 we're not just putting this on a website. We're going to do a YouTube and uh, uh, a video, and we're going to put this on YouTube. When we finished the video, I was like, no, 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 this is too big for YouTube. I am calling Clint, and I am going to let him see this. Mm -hmm. And I called you, mm -hmm. and you said, okay, send it to me. And you called me almost immediately, and you said, I, I want this. Right. How many of these can you do? And I'm like, no, yeah. this is a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, no, 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 we need more of this. Mm -hmm. I was like, OK, I'll do one a week. It's like, mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. and, and you believed in what you were seeing mm -hmm. uh, because the evidence was being presented in it. It wasn't just talk. Right. A lot of people before talked about the natural resources, mm -hmm. but we presented actual evidence, yeah. signed documents, et cetera. And that changed the game. And as we showed this, you actually gave up your show. Yeah. <laughs> like you're doing now, yeah. and allowed us to play the documentary on there every week. And, uh, and uh, it, it got to the point where people started asking, you know, uh, what are we going to do about this information we have? Right. And so we started to do the protests uh, during COVID, the lockdown. We, we weren't allowed to do protests, but we did it anyway. We, we tabled a bill in the House of Assembly. Um, um, we uh, filed complaints with the FEC, SEC, the FBI. We filed for commissions of inquiry, et cetera, based on what we were seeing. And, uh, and it got to the point where we decided to have a big rally. And that morning of the rally, they came and locked me up on some trumped up charges, some really big charges. It was actually funny. Uh, they, of course, they dropped it because the, the, it seemed like their only purpose was to stop the rally, but it made the rally bigger. And I came to the, to the, to the decision right then that they're not going to do what is right. Clint, they've been lying to us about the natural resources. There's a clip going around with you talking about it, saying you're rich, you've mm -hmm. been robbed. Mm -hmm. And so you, you agree with the same thing I agree with. And I, and I, I want you to talk about this more, because this, is, this can transform our nation. Yes. This can. This is the key to all of the problems. Our prime minister is going around from place to place begging. You see, they're saying that the IMF is telling them, y'all are going to need more money. We need income tax. Right. We need to increase VAT. Y'all need more money. Y'all owe us. And so the prime minister is saying, no, we're not going to do what they say. But they always do what the IMF says. Mm -hmm. and, and you may not do it now, but after election, 
income tax. So, so we need change. But th what we've been teaching the people and what you allowed to get out there, because you, you, you were the person who sparked this movement. Mm -hmm. You gave us the, the, the platform to be able to do this. And so I thank you for that. Sure. All right? And I think the people out there should thank you for it, too. Some people are disappointed you're not still talking about it. But some people tell me I need to talk about it more. Right. Can and you and believe I, that? We all understand when we're in different roles, we do different things. Yes. It hasn't changed who I am. Yeah. Um, my roles have changed. As a matter of fact, the reason why I got into, into, into working in government is because I, just like you, I, I was advocating over repeatedly. Yeah. For change. Yeah. And then it, it just and then it hit me. Well, why not be the change? Yes. And so and so my fight still continues. And that's to how be I the got change. Here. Exactly. And yeah. to be the change for people. And I'm, and I'm never going to stop that. Mm -hmm. And people can tell you even in my role now, it's still people call me and say I need help. I try to help them in, yeah. in, in whatever way because at the end of the day, regardless of what label you're under, it's about helping people in our country, right? Because our country needs to help. We're a young country, but if we don't do something about it. Mm -hmm. We won't have a country at yeah. the end of the day. So yeah. I stand, and I still completely agree with you in regard to that. And so I understand the fight. Mm -hmm. I understand the, the, the push. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I think for people it's hard to accept some of the radical people that may yeah. be associated with with, mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. We see Maria all the time. You know, she may be with her, with her phone mm -hmm. somewhere. She was in Zedness and Freeport yesterday asking, who have the tape for the, for the John Quill Jones? <laughs> and, you know, so whatever it is. But that's what people do. Right. But, but I wanna, then, underneath it, yeah. the, I believe they're... There is a genuine desire, I would hope, mm -hmm. to see a better country. I want to. I want to say this, and the people around me. Um, some people feel like you know the people, the Bahamians that come out when we have a protest, and that's the people around me. I don't even know like half of those people, or right. not even a quarter. Um, they are Bahamians who just come out to support the movement. But I want you to see the Bahamians around me. We and I thank you for covering it. We released um, a few months ago 19 of our candidates. We right. just released another two right. candidates in Abaco. I want you to see the level of candidates that we're releasing. These are professionals. <clears throat> These are professionals who are never interested in politics. Never. We had persons like Dr. Veronica MacGyver. She, she, she can't even believe that she is doing this. All right? Um, she was never interested in it. But like you, she feels like we got to do something. She saw the evidence of the natural resources, and she believed that this is a way to empower our people. Mm -hmm. And she wants it to happen. You have people like William Knowles, you know, another uh, well-known businessman, a CPA. And there's other CPAs and lawyers and doctors and accountants. These are professional people. These are not the old faces that you are used to. Mm -hmm. These are professionals, and when we start... What is causing them to come forward? Because they see the message. Most people who say that we're selling dreams or don't believe in what we're doing, they haven't actually watched or listened. Most people who watch and they see the message, they, uh, they're coming forward and they believe in the change. Now, a lot of people are tired of the country failing. You can't go get educated, live in the States for a while while you're in school, see how things just work, and then come back here and nothing works. Right. Come on. I'm not, I'm not downing anyone, but 50 years and not one hospital, man. 50 years and we're still talking about electricity and water. They're basic. 50 years, we're still talking about ambulances. We're bragging about paving roads. Like MPs want a credit for building a clinic. 50 years, man, we got to stop settling. Or maybe that's why they call them settlements on the family islands, but we got to stop settling, Clint. Um, all of our family islands are neglected. And so these professional people have come forward because another thing that a lot of them agree with, we have a principle called island states and city government. Mm -hmm. And we see the government now uh, arguing a bill uh, about local government, that they're going to change something. Nothing is changing in that bill. All right? They have the ability to raise some money by charging you for parks or something, but that's, that's negligible. We believe that the money made on an island should stay on that island, Clint. Should stay there. Mm -hmm. Abaco, um, Grand Bahama, Andres, etc. We believe that their GDP could compete with actual nations like Jamaica, Barbados, etc. And we will be 24 nations in one based on the plans that we're putting together, if they could keep their money. The airport alone at Abaco makes $60 million a year. That airport, they could, the bathroom is barely working, the AC is not working, they don't have a radar. $60 million that they send to Nassau. This is what we want to change. We want the money that made, that's made their stay there, and we have a proper city council and a mayor and a governor for the entire island that determines what the money does. Because guess what? The family island people wouldn't have the needs. They wouldn't have to be calling the Nassau to turn on the airport light. Right. You know? Um, um, right now, they, they did some demolitions in Abaco with the Shanty Downs. The, 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 the men who did the demolitions, they're saying they were not paid. 
All right, that's an allegation, of course, mm -hmm. but they're saying they were not paid. You're hearing this all over the place. But guess what? If they were responsible on their island, they didn't have to come to Nassau and beg for no money. So they would get you, paid. Let me ask you, because, because one thing we're not short on in this country from anybody's ideas. Everybody yes. has ideas of mm -hmm. how they can transform, how they can take the Bahamas to a first world, how they can do all these things. And, I always, and then the big thing that we always forget to ask people is, okay, you have the what, you have the when, you have the why. Mm -hmm. And then... What about the how? Mm -hmm. How do you, ha because when you're getting government, I'll be the first to admit, you may have lofty ideas and mm -hmm. plans. Mm -hmm. When you sit in that seat, you recognize the bureaucracy of the public service, you recognize mm -hmm. the obstacles of legal challenges you face. It becomes, there are so many hindrances to implementing progress in this country mm -hmm. that it, it almost takes far beyond a five year term mm -hmm. to execute any meaningful change. So my question to you is, how? Because, it's, because let's say you were elected in the next election. Let's say Lincoln Bain is elected and he becomes prime minister. The same people who in the public service, the same ones who are there now, mm -hmm. the same people who, who, the same taxpayers out there who, who complaining about one of the bad life are the same people. How do you go and transform from the idea of greatness mm -hmm. to a realistic situation? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I do, Clint, is I go live every Sunday at 5. A lot of people say, they, they haven't heard from you. Where are you? Because they don't see me in the media as much. But I go live every Sunday at 5. And the reason I do it is I'm the only leader in the country that exposes themselves to the public so that you can question me on my ideas. And I can tell you how, sorry, how um, we're going to do what it is that, we, that we, we're going to do. Um, it's, much e it's much easier than we think. They make everything seem difficult in this country for a reason. The only problem we have in this country is corruption. There's no other problem that we have. We don't have an immigration problem. We have a corruption problem. We don't have a crime problem. We have a corruption problem. All right? And if we get rid of the corruption, then we can live in this country. We can breed. We can get things done. What's going to get it done is, see, we want to take power away from the politician and give it to the people. All right? A lot of politicians want power. And some people think we want power. We don't want power. We want to take the power away from the politicians who have been failing us for 50 years and give it to the people. And that's where island states and city government is, is going to take us. The, no one is going to serve you better than you. All right? So you are going to do it. That's how. You are going to make sure your roads are paved. That school is going to be fixed in your community because your child has to go there. You got to drive on that road. You can make sure that clinic is fixed because you got to go to that clinic. Or your mother, your grandma has to go to that clinic. And we believe that this is going to change the game. Every country in the world uses this principle, even the communist countries. Only us don't use it because the politicians want to keep things to themselves. The politicians only seem to do what they can benefit from. And that's the problem. There's a corrupt culture that we all know about, but we don't talk about. We keep it hush-hush. Contracts go to persons that are going to give some money under the table back to whoever gave them the contract. Um, and so because they're only focusing on the things they can make money from, there's so much ingenuity that we could have in this country that is not getting done. Because if they can't get something from it, it's not going to be done. Well, we're not tied to the PLP and f and and so all those corrupt ties are going to go away. We're not, our electricity bill is high because Focal sells the, the oil to, to, to BPL. All right? They, why are they going to make your fuel surcharge less and cut their money out? And Focal is owned by the PLP and f and Not literally the parties, but you know what I mean. All right? The, the interests. And so that's where your suffering comes in. These people are business partners. The FNM and PLP are one. They have been one. They've been working together. They've been pretending. I watched them debating in the House today, and Pintad got up and said, yes, I'm, we're going to vote for this bill. He's speaking for every FNM MP. We're voting for this bill. If you see problems with the bill, why are you voting for it? We are paying you to oppose. Or if you see a problem with that, you vote against that, and you expose what's wrong with that bill. It's not going to hurt. But it's almost like you're working together. And so the reason things don't get done is because they don't want it to get done. We can get things done. There are so many successful countries. We want our people to benefit from our natural resources because the real ideas in the country shouldn't come from government. The real ingenuity in any country doesn't come from government. It comes from people. You see what SpaceX is doing. You see what social media did. It didn't come from the government. It came from the people. But the problem in our country is we don't have access to capital. And so because we don't have access to capital, we can't live our dreams. We can't do that thing that we're 
gifted for. We can't take a risk because we just need a job. You got to pay a mortgage. You can't go open a business. You're going to fail. If you fail, you're going to be bankrupt. You may go to jail. And so what we want to do is have everyone benefit from their natural resources. Some people say, oh, you're selling dreams. The fact of the matter is the PLP came up with this $100,000 per household thing, all right, in, in 2014. They came up with this. They got it from the, the union leaders. Perry Christie grabbed onto it, formed a, a sovereign wealth fund, and said, yes, we're going to do that. But they never did it. But people say, we say about this 100000 thing because we, we want to win an election. We're selling dreams, but we didn't come up with that. All right, we followed it, and we did an investigation and saw where we could improve on that because we have myriad natural resources. All we have to do is let our people benefit because if you could get some of yours, your wife gets some of it, uh, you have a brother, your cousin, etc., Everyone has a talented person in their family, Clint. A talented person. But you could say, boy, this, this fella could cook so good, but we can't open a restaurant. But if you're benefiting from your natural resources, you can actually say, let's put together, and this talented person right here, this the computer one in our family, just open a computer business. And that's what happened in countries that let their people benefit from their natural resources. They, the people didn't stop working. The people didn't get lazy. Uh, uh, what they did was they got, they started to do what they love, what they were born to do. Can you imagine a whole country with people doing what they love, not doing a job because they just needed a job? Right. And that is how we're going to change the game. So how it's going to be done? All of the ideas are out there in Bahamians that we are some talented, gifted people, you know. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we are depending on 14, 15 people in the cabinet to determine what happens for the whole five years. And that's why nothing gets done. Because 14, 15 people can't focus on 700 islands. They can't focus on every idea. So they get lazy and they wait for, for a foreigner to come and bring their ideas. And that's where the problem comes in. We are going to put uh, the money in the people's hands from our natural resources. And we are going to transform this nation. Is there, because I know you're out of time, is there a, a guide, a book, a vision for the COI on how they plan to transform the Bahamas. Yes, we, we released our Vision 2025 before the last election. We are currently, with all of these talented candidates and other persons, we are working on Vision 2030. It is going to blow your mind. Not only are we going to show you what's going to be done, we're going to show you how we are doing 100-day plans. So, Island State City Government, we're showing you what is going to happen every day from day one, from the, the day after election. And at the hospital that we're going to build, we're showing you the breakdown of everything. Real professional plans that you can see in you can say, wow, this can be done. Real plans. And so um, there's Vision 2030, and we're going to break that out in stages because we can't do all in one time. But we're going to show you the plan for a new Bahamas. And we are going to lead this country with new people, new faces, not the old political faces. We're going to lead us into the new Bahamas that just works. All right. We're out of time. Nine o'clock. You, you got robbed because of our breaking yeah. top story. So that means one thing. I have to have you back so Thank you get your full hour. Um, I want to be able to talk in detail about the yes. plan. Yeah. Health care. I want to be yes. able to talk about youth and development for youth and education. Mm -hmm. I want to give you the opportunity to speak to those things. Yes. So I'm definitely going to have you back. That's Thank an you, open man. invitation. A public one here. Yeah, call me accountable to it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you man. And I'd appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And that's our rundown for tonight. For all of us here at Jetanes, I'm Clint Watson. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to